<clears throat> Hello, Michael. Hello, Neil. Hello, Flavia. How's everyone doing? Uh, I'm okay, Neil. I'm here. Hello, Manuel. Hola. Am I feeling better? Um, that's a complicated question to answer. Uh, I don't really want to talk about it too much, but yes, I have some pretty serious health issues that I'm dealing with right now. And uh, a lot of it revolves around my sleep. Um, but, uh, I'm seeing a doctor on Friday and hopefully I'll figure out what's going on soon. Hello, Amy. Hello, Jungwa. Hello, Freezems from Morocco. Thank you, Neil. <sighs> Good morning, Marco Antonio. Hola. And Huda. Hello. Hello, George from Suzhou. What time is it now? It's 9.43 a.m. here. Yeah, that's because I'm on the other side of the planet, George. I live on the other side of the planet. Hello, Iman. Yes, I know that too, George. Shinyan Kwaila. I live in Ohio. It's in the middle of the United States. It is cold this morning, yes. It's uh, 37 Fahrenheit, which is... Ah. About three degrees Celsius. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, Neil. It's about two hours south 
and west of Columbus. Uh, Islam, I have some health problems I'm dealing with. So, uh, I, have, I haven't seen the doctor yet. I will see him on Friday. How can you learn grammar, Peggy? It's not hard. Get a grammar book. There are hundreds of them. Grammar is honestly something that must really be mostly self-study. It really does. The secret to learning grammar, in my opinion, is two things. One, find the book that you like to learn in. And two copy that book 10 times and go through it 10 times. If you can finish one proper grammar book 10 times, then you'll be fine. Okay? Teacher AS, advanced grammar in use by Raymond Murphy is good, but that's advanced grammar. And actually, it's not my favorite book because... Uh, English Grammar in Use, all those books are the most famous ones. I have all of them. But those are not good. <laughs> Let's put it this way. That book is extremely comprehensive. But it sucks at teaching anyone anything who's trying to learn by themselves. If your explanation needs an explanation, then it's not a good explanation. <laughs> Uh, Peggy, YouTube is not better for learning grammar. Peggy, you think YouTube is better only because, I don't want to insult you, Peggy, but don't be lazy. Grammar's not easy. It's not going to be easy. There is no easy answer for learning grammar. There is no easy answer. Grammar sucks for every language, <laughs> okay? Grammar is not fun for any language. You can use YouTube. I'm not saying you can't use YouTube. But I am saying that you should have a grammar book and you should be learning in a grammar book. Now, Teacher AS, advanced grammar in use is not the one for anyone who's starting out. Of course, that's why they call it advanced, right? Uh, they might try that book from the beginning level, but I would also recommend a book that I use with my students that's just called Basic English Grammar by Saddleback Publishing. That's the book that I actually like the most for learning grammar. Why? Because it's not difficult. It is relatively easy. It's meant for adults and kids, and they make the explanations very clear. Okay, and then you need a grammar workbook, too. All right, so you need one grammar book that's to explain everything and give you a few exercises. But you also need a grammar workbook that has pr uh, present tense exercises, pages of them. Past tense exercises, pages of them. Not explanations, just exercises for you to practice. Okay, why? Because one simple reason. Americans don't really learn grammar from books. Yes, we study it in school. Sure, we do. But that's not what we learn. That's not how we learn. We learn from our environment. So if I say, uh, Mom, can I has a cookie? Can I has a cookie? My mom will say, no, you can't has a cookie, but you can have a cookie. Oh, I see, mom. Can I have a cookie? That's how we learn grammar. Okay? But you don't have that option. You don't have the same environment for that. So you need to find a way to replace that same level of correction. And that means you just need a lot more repetition. That's all it is. It's not a difficult answer. Find one book that you like. Take it to a copy machine. Copy it ten times. Make ten books. Finish all ten. The first time you do it, it will be a little bit hard. 
The second time you do it won't be that bad. Third time you do it, a little bit easier. Fourth time you do it, better. By the time you finish the tenth time, you will know English grammar. Okay? Now, if you want to learn English grammar using other methods like apps and videos and other books and TV and teachers and friends, great. That's great. But the books for you should be your primary method of learning. Primary. Cameron, no flirting on my channel, dude. Keep it in your pants. This is my show, not yours. Got it? Girls don't come here to be flirted with, man. They're coming here to learn. It's a classroom. Have some respect. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Did I catch the news this morning? Jeffrey, uh, maybe, but we don't really talk about news here because the news is always political and boring. And usually not the whole story. <laughs> but it's, it's morning here, man. It's, it's the beginning of my day. I haven't had a chance to really do much yet. Okay. Aman says ashwagandha herb is very useful for stress, stress issues. Okay, I've never heard of that, but I'll, I don't know. I'll see if I can figure out how I can get some. Hello, MC. Thank you. Thank you, Islam. Peggy. There are some mountains that are just hard to climb. <laughs> there are some mountains that are just hard to climb. You can't make the mountain smaller. You can only prepare yourself better. That's it. Okay? Grammar is a mountain that is hard to climb. Okay? But if you prepare yourself better, then you'll be okay. Okay? All right, and if you take your time by going, the 10 books that I, call, that I told you, those are your 10 stopping points on the mountain. Okay, so the first time you finish the book, you're here. Second time you finish the book, you're here. By the 10th time, you're at the top of the mountain. Okay? Did I watch the Super Bowl? I did not. No, I did not. I told you, people, I'm not interested in sports, and I'm definitely not interested in sports that are obscene in the amount of money they spend. And that one is obscene. The tickets start at $1,000 and go up to like $9,000. But there are hungry kids in Las Vegas this morning. So no, I didn't watch it. Don't care. I have better things to do with my life. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you like sports, that's great. But I have to show you something different. And I don't like sports anymore. In this, uh, I, maybe when I was younger, I did a little bit. Okay, a little, not too much, really. But the truth is, I now think it's a bit silly, and there are too many problems in this world, and we need to start focusing on the things that are actually important. And if you're spending a lot of time watching or paying attention to sports, I don't really see how that's valuable to our planet or our community or yourself, to be honest. Instead of watching people do amazing stuff, how about you go do some amazing stuff yourself? There's a good idea. Instead of watching people on TV and going, yay, he's so amazing, go be an amazing person. Hello, Salah and Ali. Thank you, Islam. Jeffrey, you learn English the same way you learn Chinese from the beginning. 
okay? There is no answer to that question, and you know that. What am I going to say? Oh, well, you just need to do this. No, it's too big. Besides, you know how to learn English. You're Chinese. I know you studied English in school. You just didn't pay attention enough, and all you wanted to do was try to get the answers for the test. You and about six billion other Chinese people, they all finished their schooling and they all studied English, but they didn't do it the right way. And so now they're here asking me, how can I learn English? I don't say that to be insulting. It's a fact. Okay. Hmm. Not all grammar, just those that can help us for speaking. No, you should learn all the grammar. Not all of it is very, very important, but sure, if you want to... It depends on your learning goals, okay? If you just want to talk to some people, then no, you don't need to learn too, too much grammar. You can focus on other things and learn it a little bit at a time, okay? Don't worry too much about it. But if you want to pass the IELTS test or the TOEFL test, then you better start learning your grammar, okay? You found an app called Practica that, app, that helps you practice speaking. That's interesting. All right, Alejandro, maybe see if you can send me a link. I've never heard of it, no. Kim, uh, I still have some issues going on, but we're not going to talk about my, my health problems. Okay, I'm here today. I still have health problems, but I'm here. But we'll, we'll, I, I don't really want to talk about my health problems to the entire world. <laughs> okay? Ni hao, Shan Shan. My YouTube channel is right here, Islam. A-F-I-E-C English. Search for A-F-I-E-C English. Okay. Hello, Salma. Thank you, Kamaran. Hello, Nasser. Yes, if you want to join my YouTube channel, you can go to my YouTube channel, and if you join there, there's no time limit, and the quality is better, and you can see the uh, subtitles, and you can watch it again and again, okay? So, go to my YouTube channel. Am I interested in movies? Uh, I'm interested in some movies, but not all movies. <laughs> If the movie starts with the word fast and furious, not interested. <laughs> Where am I from? How can you improve your listening skills? Maria wants to know. Maria, you need to have more practice with listening. But, Maria, you need to listen to people who speak well. So, the first place I like to recommend people to go, if your English is pretty good, if your English is pretty good and you want to really work on it more, then go to TED Talks. TED Talks is great for that. If your English is still beginner level, then, then there's another site that I like to use, it's called rong, rongchang.com, R-O-N-G uh, hyphen C-H-A-N-G dot com. 
okay? Fiction or nonfiction, both. I like fiction and nonfiction. Do I like you, Kamaran? I don't know you, so how do I know? You didn't start off re really well, Kamaran. I'll tell you that. I, you didn't start off real well. <laughs> but I don't know you. So how can I say if I like you or not? What do I think about podcasts? Podcasts are good, too. I'm making one myself. And it's spelled pod, P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Hello, Ressa. Thank you, Ferris. Hello, Little Demi. Hello, Tanya. Privyet. Hello, Soma. Somi, sorry. I'm okay. Hello, Vicky. Yeah, all of you Chinese people who are here watching me, you know what I'm talking about. The way they taught you in school there is just the way that you pass the test. That's it. But <laughs> I have never, I have not seen one Chinese class of students who have learned English confidently. I have not seen one Chinese class of English students who have actually felt like their English is, oh, I, I like English and it's confident and I can use it. They can pass the tests. You can pass the tests, but language is not about passing tests. <laughs> language is about using it. Language is about expressing yourself. Language is about understanding other people when they express themselves. Okay? The name of my podcast is A Friend in Every Corner, English Conversations from Around the World. Very long name. You're learning English now, but you were learning Korean before? Well, you can learn both. It's just hard. Hello, Soma. Thank you very much, Islam. Uh, Alejandro, can you send me a personal message with that link? Because I can't really do much with it here. So please send me a personal message with that link, and then I'll get it later, okay? Can I explain the difference between those words, teacher, parameter, tutor, and ed educator? Well, teacher and educator, okay, let's, hold on, let me look at something. Okay, uh, I think you mean parameter. And parameter is different, uh, very different. The parameters of something is just the guidelines of something, right? So, uh, anything, a framework or a guideline or the whatever's required for your, for what you're doing, that's the parameters of something, okay? Teachers and tutors are all educators. Educator means anyone who educates. Okay? So, a music teacher is an educator. A language teacher is an educator. Okay? Uh, if, if someone teaches cooking, they're an educator. They educate you. They teach you something. Teacher is a, a more... Uh, it's, it's a similar word to educator, but it's the more commonly used word to describe someone who teaches something. When you put ER or OR on the end of a word, like tutor, educator, teacher, doctor, it means one who does that thing. A person who does that thing. So a teacher is a person who teaches. ER, the person, teach. So tutor 
is a person who gives you tutelage, which is another word for learning. Okay, tutors and teachers today, maybe in the past that word, those words were nearly identical, but now tutor is usually used when we're talking about private tutors, someone who has been paid to do some extra help. So the teacher is the, the, the first step of learning. You have a classroom with a teacher, but then if you need extra help, Maybe one of my students is not learning very well and he thinks he needs some extra help. So outside of class, he will have a tutor. Okay, at, at, you know, maybe on the weekend, he'll have a, an English tutor who will help him understand his English learning better. Okay, so again, parameters is just the general guidelines for how you do something. Okay, kind of confused me when he put that word in there because I was like, wait a minute, what is that? Well, that doesn't have anything to do with teacher, tutor, educator, but that's okay. Uh, you're welcome, Franco. Konbamwa, Manabu. What is the most important skill for English? The most important skill for any language that you want to learn is learning how to use that language in your mind. That's the most important skill for any language. If you are not learning how to think in English, then you're not learning English. I don't care how much time you spend writing and reading and listening and speaking. Doesn't matter how much time you spend doing that. If you're not learning how to think in English, you're almost wasting your time with those books and your, the, the, the rest of your study. Whatever you learn in reading, writing, listening, and speaking, you need to apply it in your mind. Make it comfortable in your mind first, and then you'll be learning. Okay? Thank you, DS. Hello, Miguel. Good morning, my friend. <coughs> Annie wants to know how to read I'll. I'll. I'll be right back. I'll. Can I type those sites? Which sites are we talking about? I'm not sure. Hello, Rima. Rima also does a podcast. Okay. Kamaran, I talk to a lot of people, my friend. I have 63,000 followers. It's hard for me to remember everyone. And your picture is that big. I can't see your picture, so I can't remember who you are right now. I'm sorry. It's morning also, and I'm not drinking coffee because of my health issues. So I'm extra tired too. Hello, Becky. Bonsoir. You want to change your French accent when you speak English? Uh, well, it can be a little tricky, Becky. Um, that's one you might need private lessons for, but guess what? I teach private lessons. If you want private lessons with me, you can go to my profile page and buy them. And Becky, I have a very special system that I created to teach anyone in the world to improve their accent. Or if you really want to, you can remove it, but I don't recommend it, Becky. So, Becky, your French accent is only a problem if people cannot understand you. Okay? Your French accent is only a problem if people can't understand you. Okay? Now, if you don't like it and you want to try to lessen your accent, there are ways to do that. Okay? But honestly, I don't think books are a good... That's something that you need private lessons and you need a teacher who can really work with you who knows you and who can describe things that you're doing wrong in a better, how, how you can improve them based on your movements. Okay. If you just watch YouTube, that's not really going to be that valuable to you because no one can tell you what to do about your accent. You're just watching general information. Okay. So to do something like that, you really need private lessons. Okay. But uh, you can buy them and I will teach you. 
You taught me some Kurdish. Uh, okay, I vaguely remember that, Kamaran. I vaguely remember that. Welcome back. Thank you. Hello, Soma. When you speak English, you lose the words. That's because you're not learning how to think in English. It's very simple. If you're always thinking in English, you won't lose the words when you speak English. That's the answer, people. How many of you forget your words when you think or when you speak English? How many of you forget your words? Then all of you, I can tell you, all of you, you're not using English in your mind regularly. You need to. If you use it up here regularly, often, throughout your day, then when people speak to you, you will be able to speak. Okay? When I was speaking Chinese earlier, I've never said those sentences before in my life in Chinese. And they're probably not entirely correct, but they understood me. And the reason why is because I'm able to use my Chinese because I think in Chinese, often. So when I need to, to, to speak, it's pretty good. It's there, it's waiting for me, right up here. It's right there, ready. But if you're not thinking about it, then it's not ready. And that's why you forget. It's that simple, okay? You're welcome, Marco Antonio. Do I think, Carlos wants to know, do I think that listening videos is a way to learn English or is it necessary to learn the rules? Carlos, when people ask me what's the best way to learn a language or learn, what's the best way to learn, my answer is very simple. Carlos, your brain is a very complicated machine and you're trying to give it only one thing. It doesn't like that. It doesn't like that. When your brain wants to learn, it wants to learn in every possible way that it can. Books, videos, apps, teachers, friends, podcasts, live streams, voice rooms, anything and everything that you can get and to put into your brain, that is the best way. Okay? Hello, Kofi from Togo. I do know Togo. Welcome to my show. My show. My voice room. My, not my voice room. My live stream. Welcome to my live stream, Kofi. Good to, to, good to have you here. How about the Pimsleur method? What's your idea? Just listen and follow some words for speaking. The Pimsleur method is a method. <laughs> there are many methods. Does it work? It works to some degree. But it, the Pimsleur method is good if, you're, if your goal is just to talk and speak English with your friends, then sure, the Pimsleur method is fine. If your goal is to get a 7.5 on the IELTS test, the Pimsleur method isn't going to help you. Well, it can help you a little bit, but you need a lot more than just that. Okay? People... Please listen. There is no one answer for good learning. There is no one method for good learning. So when you ask, is this the best way to learn? Or is that the best way to learn? Or can I learn only this way? No. All of them. You need all of them. That's the answer. Okay? Your brain is a lot more complicated and you are letting your brain down. Your brain needs that stuff if you want to learn. Okay? Oh, hello, Maria. Good to see you today. And once again, don't forget to go to my YouTube channel. Please be patient, please be patient, please be patient. How can I go from a level to the next level? 
Uh, well, when you feel like you're plateauing, plateauing means that you, you've been learning and learning and learning, but now you're stopped. You need to change your method. You need to change a, to a different method. Do something completely different than you have been doing. So if you've been uh, watching YouTube videos mostly and studying in the grammar book a little bit, that's good. But maybe you need to do a, a journal or a diary in English. And then you need to practice listening to TED Talks and try to dictate what you've you know, uh, heard or write down what you think about what you've heard. Uh, you need to uh, write a short story. You need to read a short story. You need to read more books. You need to do something different than you've been doing. Plateauing is just because you have not changed your ways. You keep doing the same way, eventually it's going to feel boring and you're going to feel like you're flat. Change your way and you won't feel boring anymore. It's just like if you keep walking on the same path every day, you're going to get bored eventually. So try a different path. Understand? There are many paths to get to the top of the mountain. If you keep doing the same one over and over again, yeah, you're going to feel bored. And you're going to feel like you're, you've stopped learning. Okay? But try another path. Do something different. Okay? Idioms and phrasal verbs are important to learn. And there is no good method for them except for uh, acquiring them slowly at a pace. Okay, so maybe do three idioms and three phrasal verbs every day. Okay, if you can do more, do more. If you can't do that many, do less. Okay? Hello, Gunter, my friend, V. Gates. Uh, and yes, that's correct. You usually have to pay for a tutor, right? A tutor is someone that's paid extra to teach you, usually, unless you're lucky. Okay. Thinking in English means not just repeating what you've heard from others. No, it's not just that. Thinking in English means whatever you learned in the book, you need to apply in your mind. So if you learn how to say apple, then you need to go to the grocery store and say, oh, look, there are some apples. If you learn how to say guten tag, then when you're walking down the hall, you need to think... Guten Tag, Guten Tag, Guten Tag, to every person you see. That's what I mean when I say you need to think in English. There are, all you need to do is live your life. Live your life the way you do every day. But try to do some of it in English. I'm not asking you to do complicated things. I'm asking you to think in English when you wash the dishes. I'm asking you to think in English when you eat food or make food or watch TV. Think in English. Those are not hard. Those are easy. Uh, Ali wants to know, what is a nursery? Uh, well, it depends on where you saw the context. Nursery generally means something that is going to nurse or nurture something young and small. So nursery rhymes are rhymes for children that are basically uh, they're educational songs and rhymes for kids to encourage them to learn. But there's another nursery. Sometimes we have a nursery for plants too, like a greenhouse nursery where it's a a confined place where they grow plants under a specific condition of a specific environment that's very good for growing plants. That's a nursery. Okay, nursery school means baby school, where they encourage babies to start learning. Okay? Hello, Farouk. If you want to learn English, you're in the right place. Well, maybe. Um, Gunter says, can I, can I say, I only wanted to ask you something, but you went ballistic. Sure. If someone got really, really angry, 
going ballistic. What does ballistic mean? Ballistics is a word that's usually used in uh, guns. It's a, it's a term that's used to describe the... The patterns and... Let me think about my words for a minute. Well... So, ballistic is related to the word ballistics, which just means the science and study of projectiles. A projectile means a bullet or an, a shell or a bomb that's something that's shot out of something is a projectile. It's being projected, okay? So, a cannon has cannonballs. The cannonball is the projectile. Studying what happens to the cannonball when it fires is ballistics. So, when we say he went ballistic, it's a slang term that means he, he blew up. Okay. Thank you, Naze. Hello, Joy. Can I recommend any English apps for intermediate level students? Um, if you do a search, I just recently saw, let me see if I can find that. There are a bunch, there are many, many, many lists online. Just do a search for best language learning apps or best English apps 2024. And I just, I'm, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lists there of the best ones. Duolingo is usually near the top. Babbel is usually near the top. Busu is usually near the top. They're all okay. If you think they work for you, then they are good apps. But just because it's on a list of the best apps doesn't mean it's good for you. You have to try it and figure it out. Okay? But remember, there is no magic to this, people. There is no magical app that's going to make language learning super, super easy, and I don't have to be worried or nervous or try. No. If you want to learn a language, it's hard. You have to try. There is no magic. I don't have a magic wand to go, bippity boppity boo, now you have English. No. You have to learn. Why do we admire smart people? people because we know it's hard to learn all that stuff <laughs> so if you want magic to get there doesn't exist i'm sorry hard work that's the only answer okay paula says i get very nervous when i try to have a fluent conversation in english paula let me ask you a question how many times have you tried to have a, an English conversation? How many times? 10 times? 20 times? 50 times? How many times? Thank you, Iman. Thank you, MC. There are two ways of pronouncing the article, the, where do we use each? There is a rule about that, Netta, but honestly, I've never thought about it in my life. Okay? And it's insignificant. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant, really. Language is more of an art than it is a science. So if you want to say the umbrella or the umbrella, whatever you want is fine. It makes no difference. The... the 
It's a semantic difference that has no real value in, in grammar or in linguistic difference. It changes nothing. It changes nothing. So it's something that I feel like there is a rule, but why we even teach it anymore, I don't understand. Because it doesn't need to be taught. Use whatever you want. That's my point. Okay, I don't care. No one cares. Okay? Thank you very much, Islam. Ali says, I studied grammar and I understand them completely, but when I come to speak, I make grammar mistakes. Well, that's normal. Me too. <laughs> I make grammar mistakes sometimes when I speak. That's life. Life is not perfect. Mistakes are one of the best parts of life because they are an opportunity to learn and improve. Okay? So don't worry, Ali. You just have to keep doing it. The more you do it, the better it will be. But it will never be perfect. You will never, ever, never make mistakes. Mistakes are part of life. Okay? Hello, Keelan. Shin Chao. Paula, if you start thinking in English every day, then I promise you within a month you'll start having dreams in English. Okay? Keen, I'm from the United States of America. That's right, Islam. On one of my videos on YouTube, that's what I say. You need books, you need teachers, you need family, you need friends, you need apps, you need YouTube, you need podcasts, you need live streams, you need audiobooks. You need everything that you can possibly get your hands on to learn well. If I want to learn cooking, I'm going to do the same thing. If I want to learn how to fly a plane, I'm going to do the same thing. If I want to learn German, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese, Chinese, whatever, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to get just one app and hope that I can learn from just that app. No. <laughs> the people at the app company might hope that you believe that, but no, no. Any good teacher will tell you no. You need everything you can, all right? Hello, Alex. I'm okay. I'm relatively okay. Hello, Ellie. Thank you for the gifts, everyone. Hello, Zara. Hello, Mina. And don't use course books. They're so boring. Well... No, Zara, you can use course books, but here's the secret. Guess what? Here's another good part of, if you have a bunch of different ways to learn, right? You have audiobooks and teachers and friends and apps and books and live streams and podcasts. If you have many, many, many ways to learn, then Zara, study in the course book for as long as you can until you get bored. Then take a break and try a different method, like an app. Then do that until you get bored. Then take a break from that and do a different method, like live streams. Then watch that until you're bored. Then do another, see how that works? That's the other reason why it's great to have many, 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 many ways to learn, because you'll never get bored. When you get bored, you just try a different way. Simple. Okay? Can I explain the words compromise and authentic? I think you want to spell, which is A-U-T-H-E-N-T-I-C, I believe. Authentic. Compromise means to... When you have a compromise, it means two parties or more are agreeing to something. And a compromise means that everybody doesn't get everything they want. No. I want all of this. He wants all of that. 
But no, if you if you want to agree, you're not going to get all of it. You have to have an agreement where you you're willing to sacrifice a few things that you want and they're willing to sacrifice a few things that they want in order for you to make an agreement. That's a compromise. Okay? So, uh if if you have a kid and he says um, I want to watch TV. I want to watch TV tonight. I don't want to study my books. Well, you could say, well, I'll tell you what. You can watch TV if you do this much of your book. That's a compromise. That's a compromise. Okay? But what I would really do if I had a kid, I would say, you can watch TV if you read this book. And then after you watch TV, you have to write a little report for me in English about what you watched. So you can watch TV, but every time you watch TV, you have to write a report about it. <laughs> so it's turning their favorite thing into a learning tool for them. Got it? Thank you, Islam, once again. I really appreciate your support. Still got life in it. Uh, Hossein, the term still got life in it. <coughs> it means uh, if someone still has some life in them, that means they still have some vitality, some energy, some, you know, uh, some kind of power or energy or vitality. They still have some life in them. Okay. You could use that when you're talking about batteries, but I think it's a little awkward, but I won't say you can't. Language is not a science. Language is an art. So, you can say, the battery is dying on me, but it still has some life in it. Yeah, you can use that. Okay? Do I have live streams on Friday? Uh, usually, yes. If I'm not tired or sick or busy, then yes. Paya Nain, I already answered your question. <laughs> I don't have any English. App. Did you do a search for that online? Because that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a search. I'm going to give you a list of apps online. Okay. And please don't ask your question a hundred times in my chat. Be patient and wait for me to answer. There are many people here. Seventy-five people are talking to me at one time. You have to be patient and wait for me to answer your questions, okay? Yes, a compromise is like a deal, okay? And Alex, the other word, authentic, is a word that means something real, okay? The authentic version of something means it's the, it's the original, real version of something. If I say, be authentic, that means be yourself. Be yourself. Okay? If I say, this is an authentic copy of the, you know, Declar Declaration of Independence, that means it's the original. It's authentic. It's real. Okay? Thank you again, Islam. Count in English silently. Yeah, I used to do that when I was learning money and numbers in, in Taiwan in Chinese. I did used to go to the market and think about money, trying to count it in my mind, uh, the new you know numbers that I was learning and money that I was learning. Yeah. Uh, this one. Okay. Thank you very much, Alejandro. And uh, Uriel, Steven, I don't know what you're asking me. 
sorry. The meaning of low key and high key. Well, low key usually means kind of be low key, right? So um, it means someone is telling you to try not to be very obvious about something. Keep it secret. Keep it quiet. Don't be too loud about it. Don't tell other people. Be low key. Okay? High key, I don't know if I've ever actually heard anyone use that term. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it means that you have strong feelings about something. Uh... Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe the definition has changed a little bit, but uh, they're saying low-key means that you're not that into something, which I think I have heard it used that way, but that's not the primary way I've heard it used. To be low-key means to keep it, you know, shh, hey, low-key, don't, don't keep it. We also say on the down-low. Keep that on the down-low means shh, don't tell everyone, Okay. It says high key is used in conversation or on social media to emphasize that someone has a strong feeling towards an event or a person. Being or feeling high key is the opposite of being or feeling low key about something. Someone could say high key to emphasize their enhanced attitude or emotions towards a situation. Uh, for example, you could feel high key happy and excited or high key nervous and worried. Yeah, that must be a new young people's way of using it. <laughs> I'm not a young person, so I haven't used it that way. Um, but that's slang. That's slang. So don't worry about it too much. You need a tip for the TOEFL test. Well, uh, I can't give you any because I don't know you. <laughs> Ro, if I don't know you, I can't tell you what you need to do for the IELTS test. Get a teacher. That's the best thing you can do. Get the books that you need to study and get a teacher. Okay? There are no secrets for that. There's only preparation. The TOEFL test and the IELTS test are both difficult. You must prepare a lot. So here's my tip. You need at least one year, one year to prepare to take the TOEFL test or the IELTS test. And during that one year, you better study hard. You better study hard. Okay? Thank you, MC. My next voice room. Uh, Gunter... Let me think. Tomorrow, probably. Tomorrow, Gunter. Tomorrow evening. Uh, yeah, the timing might not be really good for you, though, Gunter. Because usually I don't get around to doing my voice room until, you know, a little after dinner for here. So that might be too late for you. I'm not sure. During the process of learning, after a while, you need someone to coach you and correct you. Fatima, the process of learning throughout life, whatever you want to learn, everything in life is about having a teacher and then self-guidance and then having a teacher and then self-guidance and then having a teacher and then self-guidance. Self-learning is the most important aspect of learning. And yes, you need coaches and teachers along the way to make sure you're on the right path and to help you to, to be able to move along that path more easily. Okay? Hello, Ashley. Okay, Paula says, I tried to keep an English conversation more than four times with natives, but suddenly I feel nervous. Paula, I'm a drummer. Do you see those drums behind me? 
The first time I played drums on stage, I was nervous. The second time I played drums on stage, I was nervous. The third time I played drums on stage, I was nervous. The fourth time I played drums on stage, I was nervous. But after a hundred times, I'm not nervous. After a thousand times, I'm not nervous. So Paula, when people tell me, I practiced, I tried, I practiced, I tried. My first question is, how many times? And the truth is, Paula, you're not going to like my answer, but the truth is this. If you haven't tried a hundred times, or really I tell people, if you haven't tried a thousand times, then you haven't tried. Okay? Of course you're nervous. You only did it four times. <laughs> Paula, when you learn anything in the beginning, it's uncomfortable and awkward. Okay? Learning is like going through a tunnel. At first, when you see the tunnel, it's all black and it's scary. And you're nervous. But you go through the tunnel a little bit more and way down there you see that little pin of light. And it, it, you, you think, oh, there's the light. That's good. And you keep walking and that light gets bigger. And you keep walking and that light gets bigger. And then you're out of the tunnel and you feel good and everything's great. That is the process of learning anything. That's the process of learning anything, okay? So, you're nervous because you're still at the beginning of the tunnel. You've only taken four steps into the tunnel. Four. Each time you try is one step. How many steps do you need to get through a tunnel? That's your answer, Paula. Keep trying. Do it more. Nobody in this world is good at something after only four times. Okay? And I know you don't like to be nervous. I understand. But you can kill that nervousness if you just keep walking through the tunnel and you'll see the light. Okay? Am I an English teacher? Yes, I am. What do I think about learning multiple languages at the same time? Alejandro, there's nothing wrong with that, but it can be really difficult and sometimes confusing but it depends on which languages you're learning. If you're learning Spanish and Italian, there are many, 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 many similarities between them. That could be good, or it could be confusing. If you're learning uh, German and Chinese, there are almost no similarities between those two languages. That might be good, because it'll help you separate them, or it might be difficult for you because it's a lot of, you're learning two languages at the same time. It's, it's possible, sure, but it's hard, okay? Thank you very much, MC. Do I know Mr. AJ? You mean AJ Hoge? I think his name is. I've never, I've never met him. I, I've heard about him. I've heard about him. I know he's a lot more famous than I am. Uh, the effortless, effortless, effortless method. That's a great <laughs> marketing tool. Telling somebody that it's an effortless method. That's just a tool to get you to buy the, the, the product. But guess what, everyone? There are no effortless methods to learning. Learning takes effort. So why don't you sign up for my uh, method? It's the effortful method. <laughs> and Zara, my, my, my answer is his method is great. My method is great. The other method, great. There is no one. Stop looking for one. That's just lazy learning. I'm sorry, but it's true. You don't want to know this answer, but you're looking for a secret. You're looking for a trick. There is none. There's only learning. Okay? You understand my accent, but not British people? Well, go tell them br that, because they love that. <laughs> no, uh, well, uh, I'm glad you understand my accent. 
Messy, what are you trying to ask me? Thank you very much for sharing my, my account. How long does it take to get the American accent if you travel to the U.S.? Well, traveling means you're not going to be here very long. You probably cannot get the American accent just by traveling here. If you live here, maybe you can get the American accent if you want to and you focus on learning it. But it's not going to just happen, okay? I know a, a friend of mine up the street who, who is Taiwanese and he's been living here for like 30 years and he still sounds like he's from Taiwan. Now, his English is great. I understand him wonderfully. He's a great guy. And I don't think he ever wanted to have an American accent. He never cared because he understands that it doesn't matter if you have an American accent. It only matters if people can understand you when you speak. That's it. Okay? You're welcome, Alex. Okay. Adnan Khan, don't tell me what to do, or I will kick you out. I'm the teacher. You must be patient. Okay? Hello, Lokesh. Hello, Mustafa. I don't know how to salute properly, so I hope I don't insult you, but uh, I'm not sure. I guess you're an American military vet veteran. Okay. Thanks for your service when it's appropriate. Thank you. Goodbye, Hugo. Nice joke. MC, I know you're a busy person. Lots of people are busy people. Yeah, just watch it when you can. How long do I spend on social media? A lot of time because it's part of my job. My job is this, being on social media, so I have to be on it a lot. How can you use HelloTalk to get the ultimate benefits? Well, if you want to get the ultimate benefits of HelloTalk, you should buy the VIP... Uh, uh, you know, uh, buy the VIP version of the app and then you need to sit down with the app and f there is so much now on HelloTalk. It's a little bit uh, daunting, which means a little bit scary or a little bit too much to try to handle all at once. But they have methods of learning. There are classes and courses that you can learn for English or reading or listening you can buy lessons from teachers. You can uh, use the translation to help you to learn. You know, you can... Uh, so you need to explore the app, Ali, and find all the different things that are there to help you, okay? How can you use it and when I can't use it? Uh, Alejandro, we use it to describe things usually, okay? Not people, not animals, not usually. It depends on the animal or the situation, right? If you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, I saw a lion in the zoo, it was very scary. Okay, that's okay, right? But if we're talking about my dog, we don't say it, we say he. So it depends on the situation. But uh, it is used to describe things in the world. It is my phone. 
It is my pen. It is my remote. It is my water. Those are things. Okay? Thank you, Farshad. How can you learn English from basic within three months by daily spending one hour? No, you can't. <laughs> you can't. That's how. It's not possible. Anyone who tells you you can is lying. Okay? I, I assure you, every method that you see online that says you can learn a method, you can learn a language fluently in three months is lying. You can learn some but you have to dedicate yourself a lot more than one hour. Jaya. How can you be brilliant in only three months? That's what you want to ask me. You can't. You can't. Okay? That's right. There isn't any easy way for learning, but you can make it enjoyable. That's right. And it, you should. Creativity is the secret of good learning. Creativity. So, be creative. If you think that what you're doing is boring, then find a way to add creativity to it. And then you'll be okay. Okay? Am I a fan of Ta uh, Taylor Swift? Uh, I'm not a fan of her music so much. I mean, there are a few songs I think are okay. But uh, I respect her. I think she's a pretty impressive person. I respect the things that she has done, not musically necessarily. Okay, I think that she's actually a very strong person that has nothing to do with her music. I just respect her as a human being. Okay? Thank you, Iman. Jaya, you're new here. I, want, I know you want to learn English, and that's great, but you need to be patient. I've been here for two years doing this. I have been online on HelloTalk. Let's see how many hours now. I have been teaching here for free on HelloTalk, doing live streams for... Fourteen hundred and fifty hours. One thousand four hundred and fifty hours teaching here. Okay? And I've had eight hundred and fifty-eight live streams. Eight hundred and fifty-eight. Okay? And about seven hundred and thirty-five thousand people have watched. And they don't watch because of my hair. Because I'm losing it anyway. <laughs> they watch because I teach. But go to my YouTube channel right here and you can find videos that will help you with learning English. Okay? But again, please remember, I'm not here to teach you. I'm not here to teach you individually. I'm here to teach all of you. This is my classroom. You're a student. I'm not private teaching you here. I'm public teaching everyone. If you want private lessons, pay me and go get my lessons. I can teach you privately. But I'm not going to just, oh, well, let me help you. Let me, let me, there are 75 people here, but I'm going to take my time to help only you to teach you step by step how to learn English. Nope, it's not how it works. Okay? Take your time and focus and learn. Okay? All right. I'm almost caught up with the comments. <sighs> what is the difference between capable and able? Uh, that's a good question. Sometimes those probably could be used interchangeably depending on the situation, depending on the context, okay? But if I say, are you able to pick me up from, from work tomorrow? That just means, can you? Like, do you have time? 
If I say, are you capable of picking me up from work? That's more like asking you, are you able to drive and are you able to pick someone up? Like, do you, do you have the skills to do that? Do you understand? So to be capable means to have the, the ability to do it. The capability to do it means the skills. But able can mean the same thing, but usually means just can you. Okay, are you able to understand? It means can you understand? Okay, are you capable of understanding? It means do you have the brain to understand me? Do you have the listening ability? Do you have the learning ability to understand me? Okay. Hello, Giuseppe. Thank you very much for following my videos. Do I like BTS? Not really. No, I I'm, a, I'm a professional musician. Shahi, so uh, uh, I've heard BTS a few times. Doesn't do it for me. It's not my kind of music. But I will ask you one simple question. How much music have you listened to? Okay, when people ask me, do I like this? Do I like that? And I say no, they get upset with me. But the reason is because I'm a professional musician, so that means, think about, if you're a writer, if you're a writer and you write books, then you probably have read a lot of books, right? If you're a painter, then you have probably painted a lot of paintings and looked at a lot of paintings, right? So I'm a musician. I have listened to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of different kinds of music, different songs from everywhere. So if you've only listened to 10 people, you can't know what's the best. You only know what's the best out of that 10. But if you listen to hundreds of thousands that's a little different. Understand? Okay? So, have you heard Chopin? Have you heard Tchaikovsky? Have you heard John Cage? Have you heard John Coltrane? Have you heard Miles Davis? Have you heard Ornette Coleman? Have you heard Soul Coughing? Have you heard the Afghan Whigs? Have you heard uh, 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 Joe Cocker? Have you heard... Though, you see, I could go on and on and on and on and on about the bands that I have listened to the music that I have listened to. So, I don't really like most pop music. Pop means popular. Popular music is generally not very challenging. It's fun to listen to, it's easy to listen to, but I don't like that. Music is more of an art to me, so I need music that speaks to me emotionally. It has to challenge me in some way or uh, make me feel something. Now, I'm not saying you can't like that music. If it speaks to you, that's great. I'm only saying that here's the surface and you've only scratched the surface. That means you've only understood the very beginning of music. Okay? But it's deep. Music goes really far back. So here's what you should do. If you like BTS, that's good. But I want you to think about, go online, and I want you to find out who does BTS like. Not now. I mean, who influenced BTS? Who were their influences? And go listen to their music. And then I want you to find, if this guy was one of their influences, then find out who was his influence and then find out who was their influence and then go back, dig deeper, dig deeper. Okay. Are the online English tests reliable to, ter to determine the right English level for the learner without a speaking test? Uh, Mora, I would say not, n not completely. No. There is no one free online English test that's going to give you a proper uh, 
it, there's no one online English test that's going to tell you exactly where your learning ability is. If you take four or five or six of them, maybe you might have a better idea of where your learning ability is. But you're right, those all have one very big flaw. They usually don't have a good way of testing your speaking, and that's kind of one of the most important parts of learning, okay? Can I explain the word delegate? Sure. Uh, delegate and delegate. There are two different pronunciations, and they are two different meanings. A delegate is a noun. It means a representative of somewhere, usually a government representative, okay? So a delegate is similar to a diplomat. There's a somewhat relationship there, okay? Um, diplomats are delegates, okay? To delegate is similar to... Um, Well, actually, wait, let me look at one thing. I want to look at the etymology of this word. So a delegate, the 15th century meaning is a person appointed and sent by another or others with power to transact business as a representative. So like I said, kind of like a diplomat, okay? Um, Let's see, it comes from the old French delega or from the Latin delegatus, delegare, meaning sent as a representative. DE means from or away, and legare means uh, someone who has been appointed to do something. They have the power to do something. Legare means, it comes from the word that means to rule. So when you put those things together, it's someone who's sent away to not rule, but to do things that the ruler approves of. He has the uh, permission to uh, negotiate for the ruler. That's a delegate, okay? So we have delegates from this country and delegates from that country and delegates from this country, like at the UN. The people that work at the UN, those are all delegates, of those countries. Okay? Thank you, MC. Thank you, Iman. Thank you, Gagan. Please be patient. Uh, the difference between four and two. Alejandro, that's a very big question, actually. Send me a private message, and I'll see if I can send you a link that has a good explanation. There are so many ways to use prepositions. Okay? It's not very easy to just give you a simple answer without explaining it for a while, okay? But if you send me a private message, I'll see if I can send you some links that will help you to understand better, okay? Uh, hello, Jailer. Bom dia. Monica, I'm a drummer. I also play a little piano. Hello, Michaela. Your, my YouTube channel is right here. Copy it and paste it. You can get it. Okay. Okay. Normal phrasal verbs versus separate phrasal verbs can change the meanings. Kick him out. Kick out him. Uh, yeah. Again, phrasal verbs are very interesting. Phrasal verbs are basically improvised language. Okay. Okay. And, and it's a form of improvised language that is constantly changing and growing, right? So we add more phrasal verbs every year. Like, I didn't really know those words low-key and high-key meaning that now. The meaning of low-key when I was learning, which is a long time ago, uh, means secret. But now, it, to be low-key, blah, 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 or high-key, blah, 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 basically means extra excited or not excited about something, okay? But yes, the meanings change often, right? So if I say pull up, pull up my shirt means literally pull up my shirt, right? There is no odd meaning to that. You're pulling it up. But if I say pull up to the driveway or pull up to the house, I'm talking about my car, getting closer to the house. 
So phrasal verbs are improvised language, and there is no pattern to it. There is no rule that you can learn to understand them all. They're kind of like idioms. You need to just learn them slowly and add them to your vocabulary, okay? Not too much, not too soon. Just, you know, a few each day is good. Hello, Maher. Hola, Miguel. Uh, oh, jeez, I need to take a break. Just take a breather for a minute. Uh, let's see, what time is it? One and an, uh, okay. I don't have too much more time. Let's see. To stop hair, fa oh, yeah. Um, I know, Iman, but if my hair falls out, I don't really care. That's part of aging. I, I, you know, I'm getting old. I'm 48. <laughs> if I lose my hair, I don't really care. I almost feel like it's a badge of honor. I'm kind of, I'm kind of annoyed by everybody who's trying to pretend that they're young forever. We're not. We get old. We lose our hair. It's all right. I'll still be attractive. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't really care. I'll still look good. I'll still be who I am, and my hair is not what makes me who I am. Yeah. So if I lose my hair, so what? So be it. People need to learn how to age gracefully. People need to learn how to age gracefully. Hello, Dimitri. Thank you. Do I like to listen to anyone who sings nowadays? Uh, yeah, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. Alex, uh, I'm sure I do like a few people who are, are current. Yeah, I just can't think of them off the top of my head right now. I'm a little tired. Okay. But it's fascinating when you see someone in their 50s and they're looking like they took good care. Yeah, but taking good care has nothing to do with your hair. You know, I don't know. I just kind of feel like when, you, when you're so worried about losing your hair that you start spending money and doing operations and surgery to try to make it look like you're not losing your hair, I think that's more of a personality problem than it is a hair problem. You need to learn how to accept the changes that happen to your body as you grow. It's part of life. It's kind of like you're running away from growing up. Okay? <laughs> That's the way I see it. That's the way I see it, okay? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Hello, Ram. What's up? Thank you, Miguel. I don't feel so young anymore, but <laughs> yeah. Do I recommend learning phrasal verbs naturally or studying them? Uh, I think you should just try to get a good list of phrasal verbs and look at them and try to study them first to see which ones you like. Okay, phrasal verbs are very personal. Not everyone uses the same phrasal verbs. They're very individual, okay? So what I would say is, Get a good list or a good book of phrasal verbs and get a highlighter and then highlight the ones you really like, okay? And then try to use them maybe three, four each day and use them as much as you can in your mind, when you're speaking, when you're writing, reading, whatever, okay? Try to use them. Thank you, everyone. One of these days, you're going to turn on the camera and my hair will be mostly gone. <laughs> and there will be a bunch of people who will give me a bunch of crap about it. And I'll probably kick them out. Life happens. C'est la vie. 
c'est la vie, c'est la vie, c'est la vie. OK? How can you improve your listening? Ram, I do want to tell you one quick thing. One quick thing, okay? And I know you don't mean any disrespect. But Ram, I want you to be careful about using the word bro. Okay? Bro is usually a term that we only use after we know someone here. So if you use bro too much, let me tell you something. If you're using bro all the time, I know you, for you, you're, you just think it's friendly. And you're just trying to be friendly, and I get that. But you have to understand. If you're always saying, hey, bro, can you do this and bro this and bro that? The truth is, a lot of native speakers will actually think your English is not as good. Because you're using that term too much. Okay? Bro means brother. And I know there's a cultural thing. In, the, in India and parts of the Middle East, in uh, some languages there, it's very common to, to use a term in that language that means brother. I know that. I'm aware of that. But that doesn't always translate to every other culture in the world. So I'm just kind of giving you a tip here. You might want to think about when you should or shouldn't use the word bro, okay? It's not always a good idea to use it, okay? Just a little tip. You're welcome, Alejandro. Hey, hey. Okay, uh, yes, hello, hello, hello. Yes, c'est la vie. Ah, oh, hello, Ahad. I know, in your language, you always say bro. That's what I'm saying. I do know that. I know that. I'm aware of in your language that it is that way. But what I'm trying to tell you is that in English, it does sound not so good. If you're in a situation where you're just around your friends and you're with a group of people who are your friends, absolutely, you can use the word bro in English, right? So if I'm hanging out with my band, you know, I might say, bro, what's up? Hey, bro, you know, bro, it's good to see you. Maybe I'll say that. But those are people I know, okay? But if I meet somebody who I've never met before in my life and I say, nice to meet you, bro, the truth is there are a few people who might actually be upset. They might actually be offended because you don't know them yet, okay? But you're trying to assert yourself like you do. Okay, so again, I mean no disrespect to you, and I know that it's part of your culture in your language. I've talked about this many times, <laughs> but I just want to give you a little tip about English, okay? Let me teach you another really important thing about language, any language, but especially English. There's something called code switching. Code switching is a psychology term, psychological term. Code switching means, for example, right now, the way I am speaking to you right now is not the way that I speak all the time. Okay, I never use bad words here. I, I try not to use too much slang here. I try not to use too many words like gonna and wanna and shoulda and, you know, uh, I, I, reductions, things like that, okay? But when I'm hanging out with my band, I talk in a completely different way. And I do say, what's up? And how you doing, bro? And, you know, I use more common slang language and I speak faster. That's called code switching. It means you need to know when the appropriate way to use that language and where. When is the appropriate way, time to use that language and where to use that language? But you, you can't always just walk into any room and speak the way you want. You might be judged. It might, it might not benefit you. <laughs> so when you go into a classroom, you speak this way. When you're hanging out with your friends, you speak that way. 
That's called code switching. Understand? Okay, and it's a very important part of language and it's a very important part of life, knowing when to speak in the appropriate way. Okay, you got it, my, my, my friend? My friend is a good alternate, okay? I will tell you this. Bro is not always appropriate, but I often use the term, how can I help you, my friend? It's nice to meet you, my friend. My friend, that's more like an invitation to be friends, but you're saying it in a way that... Uh, when you start out, you can say it that way, okay? My friend is a good alternate to bro. And my friend sounds a bit more respectful. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to explain why, but, <laughs> all right? I know, again, Ram, I do know that. I, I understand in your culture that it works that way. I just want you to understand in my culture, it's not necessarily the same way. Okay, so save the word bro for people who become close to you or people who you feel really, really uh, uh, a sense of brotherhood for. Okay. Okay, be patient. I've got to try to get to these questions. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Simple English over in my YouTube channel says, if you, t if you talk to your boss and you say, how you doing, bro? Yeah, you might be fired. Or if you're working at Starbucks and you're serving coffee and you say, here's your coffee, bro. <laughs> no. Sir, ma'am, using the name they had on the cup, those are okay. But this is called code switching, okay? C-O-D-E. There you go. Okay, don't say you're sorry. It's okay, my friend. See, see what I just did there? <laughs> it's okay, my friend. We're good. I'm just, I'm a teacher. It's my job, man. Okay, it's my job. So I just taught you something. Now you know, all right? Okay, uh, sorry, everybody. Please be patient. Hello, Ahad. And yes, it's the same thing with using like and you know, but like and you know, day one, like and you know are uh, often filler words. You know, like if you hear uh, somebody who says, well, I went to the store and like it was really hot that day and like I, I couldn't breathe because it was so hot. And like, so I went in the store because it was like, like so much like, 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 too many likes. <laughs> that's actually not the same thing as using a term like bro. Saying the words like and you know too much is also going to be judged. <laughs> All right. If you're always saying he was like, you know, so good. And, you know, I, I couldn't stop listening to him. And like, I like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, <clears throat> You need to learn how to just stop using filler words. Do you know what the best filler word is? I will teach you the best one, okay? Are you ready? I'm going to teach you the best filler word, okay? Here it is. One, two, three. Nothing. If you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Okay, train yourself to get rid of those likes and you knows. <laughs> okay? Man also can occasionally be offensive, right? So I said man to him, but only after we had a little conversation. And, and I used it in a way that I feel like I'm directly talking to him now and we're understanding each other, so it's okay now. You see how that works? It's weird, but it's, that's, that's social psychology. Okay? Hello, excuse me. Ahad, you're from India. 
yeah, that's the that's the country that I usually have to use this. I usually have to explain this to people from India, because again, in the Indian language, whether it's Hindi or I believe also maybe in Tamil and maybe another language there, they often have a word in their language that is bro. And culturally, they're just translating that into English and using it directly. But I'm just teaching you that when in Rome, you must do as the Romans do. That means the things that apply to your culture are not always going to apply to every other culture. So you have to think about that. Okay? Dimitri wants to know, why do Americans like the like word so much? Dimitri, it's a, it's a sign of bad English. The truth is, in my opinion, as an English teacher, it's a sign of bad English. Okay? Uh, it could be someone who's nervous. You know? It could be someone who's... Um, look, do you see what I just did there? Instead of saying, it could be someone who's like, 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 I said, it could be someone who's, mm, maybe they're nervous. Shh. You don't need any filler words. Get rid of them. Okay. MC, I know occasionally I don't kick out people very often. I don't kick out people very often, but this is a classroom. This is a classroom. That's the way I see it. I'm not being paid here, but I am serious about what I do. So if I am serious about what I do, then I expect you to be serious too. It's very simple. If you walk into my classroom and the first thing you do is crack a joke... That's not usually a good way to start off with your teacher. Okay, so MC, I don't do it too often, but I did kick out the guy who uh, uh, was making a music joke. Why? Because, come on. <laughs> come on. All right? He can join next time. He learned his lesson. Okay? He learned his lesson. You can understand English, but you can't talk. Or answer people, what's wrong with me? Uh, GG, there's nothing wrong with you, except you studied English, but do you use English every day? No, you don't. And your excuse is, I can't use English every day because there are no people around me who speak English. Doesn't matter. You can use English every day. In your mind. You're just not doing it. Okay? So the secret of that is you need to start thinking in English every day. Okay? And you're welcome, Ram. What should you call to an unknown person instead of bro? Uh, well, you usually don't need to say anything at all, but if you want to be more respectful, then you can say sir or ma'am, okay? Or in most situations, casual situations, okay? Not formal. Casual situations, my friend is okay, I think. Like if you're meeting someone, it's nice to meet you, my friend, okay? If you want to be more respectful, it's nice to meet you, sir. It's nice to meet you, ma'am. But you can also just say, it's nice to meet you. You know, you don't need anything. All right. That's always safe. Okay. Alejandro, the word that you want to pronounce is acquaintance. Acquaintance. An acquaintance is like a friend, but it's someone you know, but they're not close to you. Right. So Facebook friends. <laughs> On Facebook or Instagram, if you have a thousand friends, no, you don't. You have a thousand acquaintances. You probably have 10 friends. Okay? Acquaintance just means someone you're, you know and you're familiar with them, but you're not close to them. Okay? 
That's correct. He is my friend and she is my acquaintance. That's right. To acquaint yourself with someone means to get to know them better. So an acquaintance is a person you don't know that well, but you'd like to get acquainted means you want to know them better. Okay? Behrang, you want me to write what? I'm sorry, did you want me to write code switching? What did you want me to write? I I'm sorry, Behrang, I kind of missed that. You're okay, Alejandro. I like questions. It's all right. Ahad, where was I yesterday? Uh, I have some health issues, and when I have health issues, I have to take a break. I've been pushing myself too much, and now I have some health problems because I've been pushing myself too much. So, uh, I wasn't here yesterday, and maybe I won't be here tomorrow. <laughs> but if you check my post, I made a post yesterday that said, I need a break. Okay? You're welcome, Tarfas Ali. Thank you, MC. I have a question, my friend. See, that's good. <laughs> that's okay, I think. All right? How can I use Git and all its variants? Yeah, you need another link for that, Alejandro. Uh, send me another message on HelloTalk and remind me that you want a link about Git. Git is another word that has many, many, many different uses. Okay? Do I use swear words when I hang out with my friends? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a completely different person when I turn off the camera. <laughs> it's kind of true, really. Okay? Uh, yeah, I use swear words occasionally. I like swear words, to be honest with you. But do I use them here? No, because code switching. You have to know when it's appropriate and when it's not appropriate. It's very simple. You have to know how to swim through life. Okay? Are offensive and offended the same thing? Uh, no, not really. They're similar versions of the same word. So, I find this offensive. I am offended. So, to be offended is how you feel. Offensive is the thing that makes you feel offended, okay? So it is offensive, I feel offended, okay? Kind of like, it is boring, I am bored, okay? It is interesting, I am interested. Same thing, okay? Sandstone says, I, I use I mean a lot. Okay, but if you know that, now you know that you should try to work on it. It's not always appropriate. It might be okay around your friends, maybe. But you should be careful with things like that because sometimes you lose control of those types of things. If you start using like and you know and I mean too much, you lose control of it and then you don't know how to use it appropriately. So that's why you should be more careful with them, okay? And again, I know that bro is a friend, friendly thing to say in India. If I go to India, I'm not going to correct anyone who calls me bro in India. Do you understand the difference? If I go to India and I'm speaking English with them in India and they call me bro, I will say, nice to meet you too, bro. When in Rome... Do as the Romans do. That means you have to know how to act in different cultures. And you have to respect the culture of where you are at that moment. Now, you're in India, but you're talking to me and we're trying to learn English and you want to understand how to use English in my culture. So I'm explaining to you the dynamic that works here. Okay, but in your culture, use bro as much as you want. In English or your language, I don't care. Code switching, okay? <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, day one, thank you for that assessment of my intelligence. <laughs> ZZ says, in England, we say hello, mate, or hello, love. Right, but you don't do that to your professor. You don't do that. Are you going to go up to your professor in class and say, hello, love? Hello, love. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> no, you're going to say that with your friends, but not in every situation. Right? I was just taking the piss a little bit. Forgive me. <laughs> hello, Yasmin. Bom dia. Hello, Coco. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything over here. Uh... Uh, hello, DK. Good to see you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, acquaintance. A Q U. Mm -hmm. I believe that's right. Let me double check. And I need to take a break soon, guys. Ah. Uh, if you want private lessons, I do teach private lessons, but one more warning. The lessons that I have on HelloTalk right now are cheap, okay? I know maybe you might not think so, but they are. They're very cheap, but that price will not be there in the beginning of March. In the beginning of March, my price goes up a little bit, okay? Why? Because I got to pay my bills. I have to eat. I live in one of the most expensive countries in the world. <laughs> okay? So, uh, let me double check my spelling here. Huh? Mm, A Q A S. Oh, I forgot the C. That's why. Duh. Acquaintance. There. Be patient. Hold on. Be patient. Uh... How do you know if you have options and you want to choose one or two in life's path? Ali, do whatever you want. <laughs> Life is funny. Whatever plans you make are not going to work out how you think. That's why I'm not a very religious person, but I do like to say this one phrase every once in a while. If you want to make God laugh, Make a plan. All right? I'm not saying you shouldn't make plans. You should make plans. But plans don't always work out the way you think. So when I was 18 years old, I thought, I'm a drummer, and I'm only going to be a drummer, and that's all I want to be in my entire life is just be a drummer. But I'm not just a drummer now. I was a drummer and a drum teacher and an English teacher and a cook and... Uh, a marketing guy and a translator and an author and I am doing anything that I want to do. So when you take, when you make a choice about your path in life, uh, that's why I say curiosity is the smoke of passion. Follow your curiosities Whatever you're curious about, that's what you're going to find is your passion. Okay, if you're really curious about something, keep going, keep going, keep going, and you will find your passion. Okay? Thank you for the gifts, everyone. I, I never say thank you for the gifts. It's not because I don't appreciate them. It's because I'm busy working, teaching, 
actually trying to help people. <laughs> okay? So, I, it's not that I don't appreciate them. It's just that I can't stop and say, oh, thank you so much, every five seconds when people give me a gift. Okay? Understand. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rayen. The word for Facebook friends? Uh, acquaintance. Yeah, that's the one right there. They wrote it for you, Lucia. Hola, Laura. How can you get a level C1? You have to push yourself harder, Lena. You're not pushing yourself hard enough. Try new methods, different ways of learning that you haven't tried before. Okay? When will I play the drums again? Um, I don't think today. I don't really feel like playing drums today. I'm not feeling very good, so maybe not today. Maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Okay? But thank you for asking. Okay. Wow. Jeez, you guys are going fast. I'm trying to keep up, but it's hard to keep up with all these questions and comments, guys. Can you slow down for just a minute? Hold on. Let me try to catch up. Engaged versus involved versus enrolled. Let me think for a moment. And Iman, you don't have to say you're sorry. No words bothered me here. If, 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 if your words bothered me, you would know. <laughs> okay? So don't worry. I'm a teacher. It's my job to correct people every once in a while. It's my job to show you the right way to do things and the right place to use these words. That's all I'm doing. There's no disrespect or uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not upset. I just want you to understand better. That's all. Okay? All right. Let's see. Engaged versus involved versus enrolled. Enrolled is a word we usually use when we're talking about signing up for something, like a class. I'm enrolled in school here. I'm enrolled in this class. I enrolled to take this class means I signed up to take this class. Okay? Uh, and let me look at the word enrolled very quickly because I bet it has an interesting uh, background. The, the word enrolled comes from the French enrôlé, meaning record in a register to write in a roll. So guess what? A long time ago, let's see, uh, Shoot, I forgot the word. Oh, yeah, that word. That's the word I was looking for. So, guess what, everyone? The word enrolled... Let me show you. I'm going to try to show you on my screen here. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Can you see that? What is that? What is that? If you wanted to sign up for a class or something you wanted to do, if you wanted to write something down important, where did you write it? You wrote it on something that looked like this. It's called a scroll. Now you know the word scroll means this, but the word scroll a long time ago used to mean paper that you would write something on and then you would roll it up. So the word enrolled has to do with these papers that you would roll up. You signed up your name on the class, they would roll it up and say, okay, put this away, that's who's in the class. You're enrolled, okay? Involved and engaged are somewhat similar, but there are different meanings for them. The word involved, if I say this, this uh, book or this method is very involved, it means kind of difficult, complicated, that there are many steps to it, okay? Many different things that you must do in order to follow that way. It's very involved, okay? Um, if I say, my father is very involved in my life, it means 
he's often trying to help me and talk to me and he knows what's going on in my life and we talk to each other and he helps me. He's involved in my life. Okay. Engaged. One way of using that word is talking about marriage. When we say, do you want to marry me? And that she says, yes, now you are engaged. It means you're not married yet, but you've agreed to be married, okay? And again, let's look at the word engaged. I bet it also has a funny meaning originally. And I'm sure it's French. Yeah, engagier, something like that. To bind by promise or oath, to pledge. From the phrase, from the phrase engage, meaning under pledge. So... Uh, so originally the word meant that you're, you've pledged something to someone. You've promised something to someone. That's to be engaged. However, there's another more modern meaning of, for example, social media engagement is talking about uh, are people interested in your, your page? If people are interested and they're talking and they're typing, they are engaging with it. It's similar to interacting, okay? Interaction, if, if you have a page or something that has a lot of interaction, then it has a lot of engagement. People are engaging with it, okay? But again, there are still a few other meanings for nearly all of those. Uh, enrolled is pretty straightforward, but involved and engaged do have multiple ways to use them, Okay? Uh, the difference between I see and I do see. Uh, nothing really. I think that in most cases you would say, I see. But maybe if, if you know, if, like, if I'm on vac if, if we're on vacation and someone says, did you see that thing? Did you see? I, I would say, I see. And, but if they keep saying, did you see it? Did you see it? I might say, I do see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's like maybe you're making an extra effort to make sure they really understand. So you make it more clear by saying, I do see. Okay, but again, depends on the context, Alejandro. Depends on the context. Okay. Can I sing Baby Shark? That would be a big no. Hello, Belen. Good to see you again, my love. Big hugs. See, now I only do that for Bellin because she's one of my good friends here. We're close, so I feel okay in using that with her. But I don't do that with everyone. Okay? If you want to be close with me, then you have to be friends with me and support me the way she has. Gunter, if I met Gunter, I'll give him a big hug and, you know, he's really, really nice to me, so I consider him to be my good friend. Okay. How is it going is more polite. Uh, how are you doing would be more polite than how is it going. But there's nothing particularly impolite about saying how is it going. Okay. But polite and the uh, anima is spelled P O L I T E, not Y T E. I thought you were in China before. I was in Taiwan for uh, uh, 2016 to 2020. Okay. Zizi, I speak Chinese. Okay. And I know a little bit about many other languages. I studied Latin, German, Italian, Spanish, a little bit of French. Uh, I know a few words in Arabic. I know a few words in Russian. I know a few words in Japanese. I know a few words in uh, uh, Slovak. I know a few words in Portuguese. About maybe 12 or 13 languages. I can say, you know, a few things, and I know a few things about those languages. Okay? Hello, Sophia. Sophia. 
Scroll equals rolled paper. That's correct. That's the original meaning of scroll. Scrolls were papers that were rolled up to be saved. It was easier to save them that way. They were written on parchment paper, and the paper was m very delicate. So you, you, you would use a binding to connect them to a piece of wood that would allow you to roll them carefully and store them carefully. Okay? Hello, Marlena. Good to see you again. How are you? Hello, Pene Ako. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, Danushka, can you give me a minute and I'll try to explain literally. Let me finish over here really quickly. You just turned 18. Well, happy birthday. You can be involved in a bad situation. That's right. Involved has many, many, many different usages. Uh, and you can be engaged with the cause. Again, that's kind of like being engagement with social media. It just means interaction with or dedication to. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Why do you understand what I'm saying, but you don't understand other people? Because I'm good. <laughs> because I'm a teacher. It's my job. I've been doing this a long time. I know how to speak properly in a classroom to teach you English. And I am doing my best to speak very clearly. I don't always speak this way. But when I'm teaching, absolutely I do. Okay? <laughs> I was just making a joke, Alejandro. I was just making a joke. <laughs> I was just making a joke. But there's a second part to that. Not only am I doing my best to speak well for you, but you also have to remember that when you go on YouTube to watch people, they are not trying to speak well. They don't care. They're just speaking. They're not thinking about their language at all. I am. Every single word that comes out of my mouth when I'm on camera, I'm trying my best to use proper English, to pronounce things well, to enunciate, okay? My speed, I slow down a little bit. I pause more. It's all deliberate. It means I, I'm trying to do it that way. So I am trying to be clear and understood, well understood for you. Okay? <clears throat> John, no, uh, this is not my completely normal speaking speed. Let me tell you this. I speak this way any time that I want to have people listen to me. If I really want people to listen to me about something important, I speak at this speed and in this manner. Because language is a performance. Language is a performance. And if you want to speak well, you have to think about your performance. But that's the, th the problem is most of the people who you see t in, in the world, they're not on the stage. They're not thinking about their language. They're not good performers. Okay? But language is a performance. Some people perform better than others. Okay? All drummers are good teachers? Mm, uh, maybe. <laughs> musicians. Musicians, all musicians have a tremendous advantage in language learning. Because music is a language. And if you knew what musicians do in order to practice and learn their instrument, you would understand that musicians, uh, we know 
a level of dedication to learning that most people don't understand. We have methods of learning that, that most people would say, wow, that's crazy that you do it that way. But that's how we do it. Okay? Oh, geez. Okay. Uh... The other instruments that I would like to play, Coco, I, I love drums. I like piano, and I always do like to play the piano a little bit, but uh, just for writing songs and just trying to explore sound. But any drum, you know, if you notice behind me, there are some North African hand drums there, and I have another Middle Eastern drum on top of the thing over there. There's a dumbek there, and where's my... Here's my... got another one it's it's a tabla but it's kind of like a dolak tabla because it's more like a dolak shape but the the heads are more like a tabla so i don't know what the heck to call this thing to be honest i always called it a dolak but i actually think that it's more form like a tabla okay uh a bear, the words thou, thy, and thine, those are old English words uh, that you don't need to learn anymore. <laughs> They're in old poems like Shakespeare, right? Uh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou means you. Okay, wherefore means why. But those are old words from old English, and they don't really apply to modern language anymore, okay? Uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, thy and thine and thou are all about you, but they're different forms. There were different grammar rules back in Old English than we use now. So those words were used with different grammar rules that don't exist anymore. Okay, we have different grammar rules now, all right? Uh, Alejandro, I'm gonna have to stop... Uh, with the aside side stuff, I, 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 I need to take a break soon. So maybe next time, save, your, save those questions for next time and I'll do my, do my best, okay? Why so serious? Smile a little bit. Because I'm teaching, man. But I'm not serious like, like I'm a bad guy or something. It's my job what I do here, man. But there's a little smile, okay? I joke. I make funny, you know, little quips here and there, Okay. But when I turn on the camera, I have work to do. It is serious. It's my job, man. Are you serious at your job? Yeah, you are. But don't worry. It's not entirely serious. Just give me a little time and you'll see some funny stuff too, okay? Don't I think speaking as usual is better? No. <laughs> no. Learning language, there's a big mistake that you make. You're listening to everyone, but not everyone speaks well. When you learn the drums, you don't listen to everybody who plays the drums. My neighbor plays the drums. He's not very good. Why would I listen to him? He's not very good. So I don't listen to him. I listen to the best. I listen to the most famous drummers who are amazing. And I use them as my models. Model yourself after the best, not just after anyone. You, language is so common that you just don't understand that one principle of learning. When you're learning, don't listen to everybody. Listen to the best. Eventually you'll understand everybody, but you should model yourself off the, of a people who are good at what they do, okay? Got it? Okay, all right, uh, I think I caught up, but I need to take, a, a, it's, it's about time for me to go, guys. <laughs> I've been here for two hours and 15 minutes being too serious. Oh. 
Manal, just follow my live streams, join my YouTube channel, it's right here, join my YouTube channel, and watch my YouTube videos. There are no easy answers, you gotta take some time and do some work, okay? Thank you, Marlena. And uh, Danushka, the word literally is honestly, it's a word you should try to avoid using because the majority of people who use it, either they use it too much or they use it improperly, okay? So literally is another word that's kind of like the word like. There are some people who say it too much. He literally was so like literally this and it was literally blah, blah, blah. More often than not, they usually just want to say really. And really would be a more appropriately appropriate word to use. So if you say it was literally raining cats and dogs, no, it wasn't. <laughs> literally means really. Really. So if I say it was really raining cats and dogs, that's better because people know that that's a... It's still not necessarily appropriate, but people know the word really is uh, just a word of making something more strong, right? He hit me really hard. He hit me really hard means he hit me very hard. Okay, so literally kind of means really and very, but there's it's often inappropriately used. So my general uh, tip to you is just avoid that word. <laughs> you, there are very few situations where you really need to use that word, okay? You can almost always use something alternate that would probably be better, okay? Hello, Junior, but I'm just about to leave, my friend. I need to take a break. I need to take a break, everyone. Oh. Is the drum made of snakeskin? I believe the heads are, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have a conga. You're right, I don't have a conga, but I love congas. I, I used to have a conga. Uh, I can play conga a little bit. I'm not a conguero. But I can play conga. <laughs> you put a drum in my hands, I'll probably be okay. Whatever drum it is from wherever. <laughs> if you put a drum in my hands, I'll know what to do. Okay? All right. Uh, so, again, everybody, I need to take a break. I got to take a break. It's been two hours and 17 minutes. I always try to do an hour and a half and it always goes way longer than I intend. All right. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Make sure you follow. Come back and see me again. If I'm not sick, if I'm not tired, if I'm not busy, I'll be here. Okay. Even a, an electronic Yamaha drum? Yeah. Sure. I used to play electronic drums. I used to have electronic drums. Uh, okay, Aziz and everyone else, uh, please come back next time tomorrow, and you can try to ask me more questions tomorrow. All right? I, I don't know which stream I'm going to do tomorrow, but uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay? I might do a live... Uh, I'm sorry. I might do a voice room later tonight. I might do a voice room later tonight if I'm not tired or feeling bad, okay? I am having some health issues right now, everyone, okay? I'm going through some fairly serious health problems. I don't really want to talk about it, but you need to understand that, please. So I turned on the camera today because I thought I felt good enough to turn on the camera, but I won't always. So, uh... Please understand, if I'm not here, there's a good reason. Okay? <laughs> Have, has, has anyone ever told me I'm the goat? Uh, maybe. But I just do what I love. 
I don't compare myself to anyone. The only thing I'm the goat at is being me. I'm the greatest of all time, me. No one else can be the, 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 a better me than me. <laughs> all right? Thank you, Hussein. Thank you very much, MC. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you very much. Okay? Thank you, Sylvia. Ah, oh, thank you, Danishka. And everyone over here, Alex, Dimitri, Simple English, DK, Panay, Marlena, thank you guys for watching and following. Please support me. Please share my videos. Please, uh, I'm going to upload some new videos to my YouTube. I have some new shorts. I have some shorts I'm going to do. Uh, let me see. I think I can show you one. You guys want to see one? Watch this. I'm going to show you one thing before I go. One of my really nice followers, Islam Mohammed, in Egypt, he helped me do a wonderful thing. He helped me to, uh, he's helping me to share my videos in the Middle East with Arabic speakers. Uh, so hold on, let me see, how can I, let's see. One moment, everyone. Okay, hold on. There we go, here, I'm gonna share this. Share to Telegram, send. All right, I will play this video for you as my last thing here. This is one video I made just recently and my friend in uh, Egypt, Islam Mohammed, he's my new contact there. He's going to try to help me to try to promote me more in the Middle East and with Arabic speakers. So he made this wonderful video. It's gonna take a minute to upload. But as soon as it does, I'm gonna play it for you here and you can watch it and then I'm gonna go and I need to eat some food and take a break and take a rest, okay? Thank you, Elsa. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so here it is. Let me share my screen. Boy, this is I hope you can hear it. Let's see. You have to tell me if you can hear him speaking or not, okay? Because I don't know if it's going to work or not. Okay, now, let's see. You have to tell me if you can hear him, okay? When I hit play here. Oh, what happened? See, now I can't hear it. Oh, there it is. Wait. Okay, here. This is the first time I've been with a foreign language with a foreign language with a foreign language with a foreign language and he knows the first time Hello, language warriors. Once again, my name is Teacher Mark and I'm here to give you some tips about English or language learning in general. So, Let's start with talking about your accent. Everybody is worried about their accent. How can I sound more like a native speaker? How can I sound more like you? You don't have to. You really don't. You have the wrong goal, okay? I understand many of you think your language is only good if you have an accent like a native speaker. But I just disagree. Fundamentally, I disagree. Your accent is good if it's clear. If it can be understood, it's good. That's the goal you should be trying to get to, okay? So let's talk about that for a minute. Clarity is the goal. Clarity of speech. If I understand you, you're speaking well, okay? So accents are kind of like crayons. I've talked about this before. And what this means is when you buy a box of crayons, you want a box of crayons with all the colors. You don't want a box of crayons that are all black or all white or all gray. You want a box with all the colors in them, right? So your accent is your color. And if I ask you to write your name with a crayon, if that crayon is not sharp, you cannot write your name clearly in, if it's small. 
you can only write your name clearly if it's big, right? So what do you have to do to make your crayon write better? Small. Write more clearly. You must sharpen it. I want you to do the same thing with your accent. I want you to sharpen your accent. You don't need to make it like mine. Don't change your color. Just change your clarity. All right? So, all you need to do is work on improving your clarity. Language is not about perfection. Language is about communication and expression. You just had the wrong goal. Now you know the right one. Clarity is the goal, everyone. Clarity. All right, so there you go. That was nice of him to do that for me, right? So, uh, there. I'm going to upload that later, you know, maybe today. Uh, I have a few other videos, too. All right, so I'll upload those when I can. All right? Um, so, anyway, uh, again, everybody... Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for following. I need to take a break. <laughs> Mark for president. <laughs> See, now, here's what you have to understand about something like that. Anyone who wants to lead shouldn't lead. <laughs> Anyone who wants to lead, that's not the right guy. You need to find somebody who's really wise, but is not in, in any, has no desire for power or ruling or control. He just is, wants to help people. That's it. Okay. Anyone who wants to wear the crown probably isn't going to do well for you. <laughs> That's my, my opinion. It's only my opinion. Just my opinion, okay? So thank you, thank you guys again. Uh, make sure you follow. There's my YouTube channel one more time. All right? And uh, I will see you guys later tonight or tomorrow, okay? Have a good morning. Have a good afternoon. Have a good evening, wherever you are in the world. And remember, you've got to be a language warrior. There's no shyness in language learning. You're not allowed to be shy. It's just not allowed, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Bye.